Yeah, Mike and Eva, while Erie hasn't been issued that code orange warning, we are coming pretty close according to airnow.gov within four points actually. So what can you do to minimize the effects of that smoke on your lungs? Well, Eva and Ethan, as with anything, this all boils down to dollars and cents. Uh, essentially, United sees Erie as too small of a market to really be profitable and left just American Airlines as the sole airline to service the region. Hi, Mike and Eva. Now, as you said, many of us have the luxury of being able to work from indoors. But for people like the field maintenance crew here or even the players here at UPMC Park at the Seawolves game, that's a very different story. Good evening, Mike and Eva. Now, I'm standing here right in front of the beautiful Presque Isle Bay where pretty soon you may be able to see some uh, seaplanes coming in to land right here in Erie. Now, not only will these seaplanes give people more options when traveling in and out of the area, but it'll also bring a big boost in tourism. Now, as Eva mentioned before, this simulator is the only one of its kind within 45 miles. And as you saw in that video, if a schmuck like me can get into a simulated plane into the air, anyone can. Despite his efforts, our Tom Kowalski wasn't able to get a hold of Seinfeld, but he did speak with other people associated, of course, with the show tonight. He's joining us live from out front the Warner Theater. Hi, Tom. Hi, Eva. Good evening. Now, as you can see, I'm right here in front of the Warner Theater. We can see a steady stream of people already heading in, and you saw some st people crowding outside the front already uh, at the top of the hour. But Schiff had one more question for me. Yeah, I'll come in and shave. <laughs> Well, Mr. Schiff, to answer your question, it does get pretty cold here in Erie. I'm sure you'll experience that a little bit tonight. And despite what my mom thinks, I think I look pretty decent with the beard. And students say events like these give them the hands-on idea of what they'd like to do as a career. In the early morning hours of March 27th, Oil City Police, Pennsylvania State Police, and the Venango County District Attorney's Office responded to a call where they found the body of Marcy Suzette Lewis along the Oil City bike trail. Just days after the fatal accident that claimed the life of McDowell High School junior, Alyssa Hall, her family, friends, and community gathered near the site of her accident to celebrate her life. You know she's here, all the colors, like, exact, she wouldn't want to see all the black and all the colors. Again, um, if anybody comes to her funeral, same thing, uh, please don't wear black, it's not what she is about. Uh, we want bright colors, bright colors, because that's what she would have wanted. Thanks to police presence, drivers drove slowly, and carefully during the vigil. But the family says there's a lot more to be done to make Erie streets safer for pedestrians. All we want is change and we don't want this happening to any other child or human being. So uh, we definitely need change. And We're just glad to see that everyone is, is more aware and, and paying attention and slowing down when they're seeing these, these kids and people on the street. Um, that's all we really ask for um, is just drivers to be more aware. And the family is incredibly thankful to the community for donating to Alyssa's GoFundMe page, which will cover her funeral expenses. We couldn't bury our beautiful, beautiful baby girl without everyone's help. How quick they responded to that and how much prayers and thoughts we got. And just from you guys, I just want to say from the bottom of our family's heart, we really do appreciate it. And um, just uh, it paid for the funeral. And that's just... Uh, Something Alyssa would have wanted was everybody to come together, and uh, we're very blessed. A funeral for Alyssa is set for Thursday, and again, her family is asking those who come to wear bright colors, as Alyssa was never one to wear black. If your latest Amazon delivery is running later than expected, the reason Lake Effect Blast may be to blame. Truckers all along the Lake Erie coastline have had to slow down to a literal standstill with some having to stay camped at truck stops for days due to the weather. If there is closures, I will be sitting right where I'm parked. Phil Elder is the owner-operator of his own trucking company and says he'll probably have to stay at the Pilot Travel Center off I-90 for a while until he can hit the road again. I've been here probably uh, uh, about eight hours, about eight hours today. And uh, it looks like I'll probably be here a lot longer, probably two or three days probably looking at this weather. And Caleb Johnson, who's carrying a load to Lancaster, New York, just east of Buffalo, is also delayed due to the amount of snow in the area. I saw that we were supposed to get a couple feet of snow, so if that's the case, then I will be here for a few days as well then. And while both drivers have seen worse, they can agree that driving in these conditions can be dangerous. Once I got into Pennsylvania, the roads were pretty clear, but uh, in Ohio, the, the roads, man, they, they, uh, they hadn't plowed them when I drove through. This is pretty bad, yeah, but uh, I, I've seen some pretty bad weather. Seven years on the road, you see a lot of bad weather. 
And storms like this can do more than just delay deliveries. It can cost real money for trucking companies, especially smaller operations like Elders. I'm an owner op, and so if my wheels aren't spinning, I'm not making money. So yes, it's going to affect my profits a lot. If I'm not running, I'm losing about $1,000 a day. Tom Kowalski, Erie News Now. After months of hard work, Waldemir's latest ride, Rocket Blast, is finally ready to go. And guests couldn't be more excited. First in line. But before you ride the new Rocket Blast ride at Waldemir, I'm going to need to suit up. But riders like myself aren't the only ones looking forward to the new slide. So is park president Steve Gorman. We are so glad that we're finally done and about ready to turn the switch and have people come ride this ride because I think the public will really, really enjoy it. But guests should be aware. There's a 115 step climb to get to the very top of the water slide. Yeah, this is 67 feet tall to start, and uh, it's the longest ride we have. It's over, over 800 feet long, so it's almost triple the length of our other water slides. And your ride is, oh, I think it's 30 seconds long at least. It's pretty long for a water slide. And we're off. And I'm not the only one who had fun. So did slide supervisor and fellow rider, Isaiah Padilla. It was pretty fun, a lot faster than I expected. Um, very cold, but a lot of fun. As an operator, it's good to see like people coming down, having fun, have a lot of kids playing their day. And while the ride may be brand new, guests shouldn't worry about safety, as the park went through hundreds of tests. Then we invited our other, all of our employees and their family to ride, because we needed to get a lot of cycles in to make sure we knew how to operate it and, and get data get data on how you should sit in the boat and what weight requirements we can we can satisfy. We had probably 150 people over two days ride 300 times. It's not every day you get this close to history, but this week you can thanks to the Aviation Legends event at North Coast Flight School in Meadville. It scared me, it was coming, it was turning, it made that loud and I was like, roar! <laughs> the event aims to teach people about the women Air Force service pilots and the all-black fighter squadron, the Tuskegee Airmen, two underappreciated and marginalized groups who overcame adversity and became integral to the U.S. Air Force in World War II. Today, students from Jefferson Elementary School got to learn about the two groups firsthand. They see people that maybe came from their situation that look like them being able to excel and, you know, reach the highest levels of achievement and capability. I mean, it, it, it's nothing but good. Chris Allen, a curator with the exhibit, says these stories show these students that anything is possible. I've loved aviation since I was that tall, much like some of these school kids we've got watching the movie now. Uh, my eyes didn't allow me to become a pilot when that was my original goal. I went in a different direction. What we hope is that our six principles that you see right behind me here are things they take away and help them apply in their own lives. Everyone is going to face obstacles. These are wonderful examples because the obstacles were real specific and they didn't knuckle under to them. They didn't ask for excuses, they excelled. And pilot Doug Rosendahl says he's been able to achieve his own dreams by flying this piece of history every day. Every pilot dreams of flying a Mustang, and to be able to actually do that is really uh, a thrill. You know, I grew up as a farm kid in Iowa looking up at airplanes hoping, and for me to be able to fly an airplane like this is a, a dream come true. Tom Kowalski, Erie News Now.